Arctic Ocean, where Norse gods rule the skies, Vikings, goblins, and the undead roam the Arctic seas, and giant monsters lurk everywhere in between, all with one goal to hunt me down, including this giant killer whale that was chasing me. I was swimming as fast as I could. Suddenly, a flash of lightning illuminated the ocean. The whale fleed in terror. I looked up to find an intense storm, thunder and lightning crashing against the ocean's surface. It was Thor, the god of thunder. Boy. Why do you roam these oceans alone? It is far too dangerous. You must build shelter, and when you're ready, there is a town nearby that may take you in. Be safe, brave one. Use your head. Lightning struck ocean. He was gone. After Thor disappeared in a bolt of lightning, I decided to explore the Arctic Ocean. I stumbled across an iceberg floating on the surface. To my surprise, when I smashed the iceberg, it dropped an item. After this, I continued to float on my ice raft until I found a small frozen island to climb upon. In the distance, I noticed more of the icebergs from earlier floating towards me, so I decided to go ahead and break them. Each floating iceberg dropped useful materials, including some dirt and this tree sapling. Day one came to a close and the night was filled filled with mobs, so I just chilled underground until it was safe. Day two. During my hunt for food, the tree sapling I planted had finally grown, so I put my fists and wood to good use to craft a full set of basic tools. Now we just wait for the tree sapling. Oh. I decided to make a bunch of doors to create air pockets so I could get my hands on some stone to upgrade my tools. This way, they lasted a little longer when I was gathering materials throughout the day. I grabbed a bunch of snow from a nearby mountain so I could finish the day building a cozy igloo. But this guy wasn't having it. Mr. Wannabe Poseidon over here launched tridents at me left, right and center, dealing some crazy damage. It sent me into the next day with just half a heart, so I knew I had to get my act together and build some shelter. As you can see, I handcrafted the most intricate and complex igloo design known to the entire human race. The next day, after the mobs were done sunbathing, I grabbed some more stone, crafted myself a furnace, and cooked up some fish. Them Amiga 3 juices be busting. Things suddenly got intense. The ground beneath me began to shake, and to my surprise, the killer whale had returned! This whale's bite packed a punch. I raced to the igloo to replenish my health, but I had nothing. I had no choice but to dive into the freezing waters and grab some grub. The whale taunted me, lurking in the waters. The moment I grabbed the fish... Before we find out what happens next, I want to give a huge shout out to Red Magic for sponsoring today's video. Now, I've never been a game on the go kind of guy, but mm -hmm. Red Magic hit me up and sent me the Red Magic 8 Pro, and oh my. First of all, the packaging is the littest thing I've ever seen. Just look at this. But the main event lies inside. As soon as you boot this magical mobile gaming beast up, you'll instantly get one dribbling right now. 6.8 inches of true OMLED powered by a crazy fast 16 gigabytes of RAM. The brand new super speedy Snapdragon 8 Gen chip is engulfed in a beautiful titanium case and the whole thing is kept cool with the new ice 11 cooling system and icing on the cake is the sick customizable rgb lights on the back the red magic 8 pro is just perfect for gaming it's dual stereo speakers sound amazing the screen's high touch rate combined with the 520 hertz shoulder triggers means i'm getting the competitive edge on all my favorite games check out the win i just screen recorded on apex legends this red magic 8 pro has a whopping 512 gigabytes of storage so no need to remove my favorite games to make space for another the battery life is also insane. I watch my favorite YouTubers for as long as I like. I can subscribe. And even when it does die, I don't even care because the charging screen is lit. The Red Magic 8 Pro comes in three designs. This one's titanium, but you can get your hands on void and matte. And they're so futuristic and simple. I love it. It's not just the perfect gaming phone, though. The 50 megapixel camera is unreal. I've never seen pictures look this good with HDR mode, night mode, it has everything. I found myself throwing my old phone to the side and using this way more often when I leave the house. Check the link in the description and get your hands on your own Red Magic 8 Pro today. All right, back to chaos. <gasps> the whale pounced! I launched into a flurry of sword attacks to keep the beast at bay, but its bone-crushing jaws were too powerful. I was down to just half a heart. I quickly fled to the surface and into my igloo to cook the food I risked my life for. With hearts came bravery. I dived back into cold waters to face the giant whale. I sliced and stabbed with my stone sword. Finally, the beast was slain, and with it came a reward. The 
deep rumbles of our battle has shook icebergs free. I took advantage of the aftermath and smashed the icebergs, grabbing even more useful items I may need on my journey. When I returned to my island, I had visitors, a small waddle of penguins. Thank you for taking down that whale. We can finally swim in peace. We've been watching you for a few days, kid. Impressive igloo, I must say. Hey, thanks. I appreciate that. Harold, we just get to the point. The kid's gonna freeze to death. Wait, what are you talking about? We wanted to tell you sooner. There's a snowstorm that rolls through these parts every few days. And well, today's that day, kid. Get inside! The sky turned white. Everywhere I looked, there were heaps and heaps of snow spiraling around me frantically. I tried racing back to my igloo for cover, but the icy wind swept me from my feet, launching me up and into the Arctic Ocean. I finally crawled my way back to Shalton and waited for the storm to pass overnight. With sunrise, the storm had settled. I left my igloo to find the penguins had gone. They were equipped for this kind of scenario, unlike me. No building materials, food or company. I decided it was time to go out exploring and find one of those settlements Thor mentioned. I really hoped they were friendly. I jumped on my ice raft and headed out into the unknown. After some time exploring, it came to an abrupt end as I discovered some mysterious figures in the distance. They were Vikings, calling for help. A village is under attack. The undead used the storm as cover and then ambushed us. We need all the help we can get. We're losing more and more men. Do I look like Viking material to you? Look at the size of those skeletons. You're braver than you think. Aiding a Viking in battle is always rewarded in our settlement. If you survive, of course. The rewards looked too juicy to turn down. They looked powerful. It was risky, but I decided to accept the quest and head into the village to fend off the undead. I joined the small army of Vikings nearby in their battle with the undead axe bearer. I hit the skeleton a few times, but this creature was huge and dealt some serious damage. I had to retreat quickly. The Vikings finished the beast off. A soldier exclaimed, We'll hold this area, go help the others. I quickly replenished some health and headed in to face the second creature. I dug deep into the front line, striking the gutless creature with my small but reliable stone sword. I stood guard with my viking peers and pushed the beast into freezing waters. With his joints frozen, we dived in, determined to destroy the undead creature. I watched as a viking in rage struck its skeletal frame until it was no more. He signaled to me underwater, head up and finish off the final attacker. It was just me and one other versus the enemy. I used the same tactics from earlier, forcing the skeleton into the ocean, freezing its bones, and then striking it with my sword. It was gone! I did it! I swam to the surface to find the Viking army waiting for me. A true display of bravery. Aha! Let us cheer, boys! The village I had helped save was called Jakulsa, a small but noble Viking town filled with life, food, and materials, which hopefully I could get my hands on. As promised, your rewards for helping us in our victory. A chest appeared in front of me. For completing the quest, I had gained three new items. An arctic fishing rod, a viking axe, and an ice bow infused with an ice mage's magic. Sweet! If helping people is your thing, brave one, head into town. There's always someone in need of help here in Jakulsa. More quests means more rewards, so I headed into Jakulsa, hoping to get more insane weapons. As I wandered through the town, the Vikings were greeting me. One even gifted me a Viking shield. With this new tool in hand, I headed over to a local bystander to see if he had a quest for me. The village is running low on supplies, our mine shaft is out of bounds, and it's all because of a horrid, ice-blooded creature that lurks down there. Oh, listen, dude, if you take this thing out for me, I can use its ice shards to craft you some really useful gear. And Jokulsa's resource Sources will be up and running again. It's a win-win. I really needed some better gear, and by the looks of those rewards, I was in for a pickaxe and some magical staffs. I had no choice but to accept the quest from the miner. Before heading out, I stocked up on some food using my new arctic fishing rod, and whilst it was cooking, crafted myself some more stone tools. I then headed into the miner's cave using the town's cart system. The cart looped in circles, leading deeper and deeper into the underground. When I reached the bottom, I discovered a chunk of the cave's wall had been Frozen. Could the creature be behind this wall? It was too risky to face this creature unprotected, so let's go ahead and... 
With a full set of iron armor, I started mining my way into the frozen wall in search for the monster. Eventually, I reached the end of the tunnel to find a large frozen cave. I headed in carefully. Icicles scattered this creature's lair. At first, I thought I was alone. When suddenly the creature emerged, the frozen beast rattled the cave's walls with its roar, summoning chunks of ice that slashed at my heart, doing some chilling damage. I tried to create some space, retreating slightly. However, the creature let out a monstrous roar, slowing me down. I tried to escape, but the monster doubled down, shooting huge explosive icicle-like bombs that rumbled the entire cave, forcing me to pivot around the creature, using my ice bow to pierce the monster's frozen weak spots. It roared in pain, summoning more chunks of ice to block the arrows. This left me with no choice but to close the gap and strike the icebreaker with my viking axe. My brutal strike smashed masses of ice from the creature's face, forcing the ice monster to summon ice golems from the chunks of ice scattered around this now frozen arena. The golem's sharp, frosty claws bruised me, knocking me back, away from their guardian. But risking my heart, I relentlessly beat down the ice golems, all whilst dodging the creature's explosive ice bombs. The creature was weak. Its accuracy was fading. I found an opening and struck at the beast with my axe, finally destroying the ice monster. It left behind an ice shard sparkling in this now empty frozen layer. I retrieved the ice shard and headed back to the mine shaft, mining ores along the way. I followed the tunnel home, hopped back in the ice cart, and followed the tracks back to the surface, ready to claim my rewards. Hooray, hooray! Thank you, brave one. And now as for that ice shard, let me just... <laughs> Go, just take this. Okay, and now a little minor magic. All done. Here you go. A chest appeared in front of me. Inside lied three items. A durable pickaxe, a small ice staff, and a large glacier staff, infused with the shard's ultra abilities. The miner thanked me for completing the quest and headed back safely into the mine shaft. I decided to leave Jacosa for a few days and head home. I used my new staff's ice attacks to clear the sky of phantoms. The storm was getting worse, so I took shelter in my igloo until the beautiful morning came, then headed underground. I killed this baby zombie, then used my tools to collect resources, including ores, deep slate, and wood from a mine shaft. I returned home, made some space on my island, and built a small and humble house out of wood and deep slate. I added some chests for storage. All I needed was a bed, as I was tired of fighting phantoms. So I headed back to Jacolsa to see if I could grab one. Whilst walking through the town, I stumbled across an argument. Hey, be grateful you've got any food at all. Oh, I'm sick of eating that fish. I headed up to see if I could help. The townspeople are tired of eating the same food every day. Fish, fish, fish. But it's not my fault. I lost my recipe books. I can't cook without my recipe books. Hey, listen, you think you could find them? I lost them whilst looking for plants out at sea, near the great cold Sierra. It's dangerous out there, but nothing your magic staffs can't handle. <laughs> I was certainly ready for another adventure, and the rewards looked insane. Just look at that. What even is that? I went ahead and accepted the chef's quest. I left the Viking island and jumped on my iceberg. The boy heads into danger. I must keep an eye on him. During my voyage, I took on a couple of undead skeletons using my magical staffs. The big dude was tough as nails, but I used my glacier staff to line the floor with spikes, followed by a summoning of ice crystals that fell from the sky. The explosive frost kept the gutless creature in place whilst I finished him off with my axe. And looks like I gave this guy his home pack. I had finally made it. This was the frozen Sierra. Its rocky structure was hard to navigate. The mountains were filled with deadly frozen spirits, frozen mobs, and of course, phantoms and creepers. This place is hell, man. During the morning, I found the first recipe book. All the commotion must have shifted the snow. With four left to find, I got to work pretty quickly. One recipe book was stuck on an ice pillar, so I used my fishing rod to pull it down to ground level, where I spent the night during a snowstorm. I found the third book being guarded on the top of a mountain by a snowy tiger. I tried sneaking up on him, but he heard me coming and sprinted towards me. I channeled a beam of ice to keep the tiger back. I took out the tiger with my axe and picked the recipe book up. I studied the maze-like mountains in the frozen Sierras. The puzzling paths led me to a structure in the frosty canyon. As I approached the building, I heard screams. Help, help. Before I could head in, the wooden doors were busted open, revealing a giant bearded dude. He threw one of his axes at me. Stop right there, you little intruder. He grabbed his axe from the ground. But I heard screams. What are you doing in there? Do you not know who I am? I'm Bjorn. I feast on screams. I roam this ocean, claiming all that is rightfully mine. Now leave. You're wasting my time, and I've got a Viking town to pillage. And I'd like to get there before nightfall. 
Viking Town? You mean Jacolsa? I can't let you take it. Ooh, someone's feeling brave. I'm gonna enjoy this. The pillager jumped into the air and came crashing down with his axes, summoning bolts of lightning. He then clawed at me with his weapons. He missed his second swing, giving me a chance to strike him with my own Viking axe. He countered with another slam attack, then threw his axe. I returned with a beam of ice using my glacier staff, combined with a flurry of ice bombs, freezing Bjorn in place. When he broke free, he tried running. The boy fights well, but is he ready to wield the hammer? We shall see. With one final strike, the giant pillager was gone. He left behind more axes and a helmet. Turns out the beard were as fake as his threats. When I told the mystery hostage you were safe, out came a lonely villager. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's a miracle you came when you did. Why are you out here anyway? No one visits these mountains unless they need to. Well, I'm, uh, I'm looking for recipe books. A chef from a Viking village lost them. If I return them, he's going to give me some pretty sweet gear. Wait. You mean these? Yes! How did you find those? I found them whilst exploring the mountains. You'd be amazed what you find in these parts. Here, take the books. Thank you so much for saving me. The villager gave me the last two recipe books I needed. He headed back inside, and I headed back ready to claim my rewards. Oh, Jacosa. <laughs> I better tell the others. Fresh meat. <laughs> Little did I know that I was being followed by a group of ice goblins back to the Viking town. I made it back to Jacolsa and returned the recipe books to the chef. I'm so happy you found them. Let us celebrate with a gathering this evening. You can help with the preparation using your rewards. Build a farm area and plant potatoes and carrots. I'll use them in my recipes to make us all a delicious meal. Oh, and go and speak to the miner. He has a little gift for you to help with the farm prep. I had completed the quest. Another chest filled with rewards. I had obtained a brutally sharpened icy spear, a bunch of health potions, and a water-infused hoe, which brought me on to my next task. I headed underground using the cart system to find the miner had resided in the old ice creature's lair. I was really feeling my impact on this town. The miner had used more ice shards to craft me a glacier shovel, which I used to grab a load of dirt so I could plant the seeds I'd collected from the floating icebergs. For the next couple days, I built a small farm area where I used my new tool to to plant carrots, potatoes, and other vegetables for the chef's gathering. I also grabbed some wool so I could craft a bed after the gathering. Finally, nightfall was here and the Vikings had gathered to eat the chef's tasty meal. Finally, not just fish, but things were about to go south. Did you poison all of the food in the farm? Of course I did, just enough to send them all to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your little party. Overlooking the Viking town, a goblin watched as we all celebrated. But little did we know that the goblins had poisoned the food. I began to feel lightheaded. The town was in danger. I began to panic. I wouldn't be there to help defend Jacolsa. Before I knew it, my vision started fading and I passed out. Ah... <sighs> A large squad of ice goblins watched as their poison knocked out the guards one by one until the whole town was asleep. They creeped in house to house. Their intentions were clearly evil. The next morning I awoke to find myself in a secret room and one of the king's guards were explaining what had happened. And during the night the goblins snuck in and kidnapped our town's best men. I think they're gonna eat them. But our scouts have managed to find the goblin camp. Go speak to the king quickly. I left the secret room and sprinted past the guards into the king's humble home. Oh my. This is a total disaster. Those are our best men. You have to help us, brave one. The goblins will spot one of my Viking men from a mile away. But you, oh yes, you, you're small and fierce. You'll be able to sneak right in and rescue my men. Bring them back safely, brave one. And you'll take your place as my captain. Here in Jakusa, I'll have my miner craft you the finest armor the Arctic Ocean has ever seen. This reward was exceptional. The armor looked extremely tough and laced with potential magical abilities. A full set of arctic armor would be perfect for the ocean's icy conditions. So I accepted the quest and started to prepare. I grabbed some potatoes for the road and headed into the mines for diamonds. So I could craft a full set of diamond armor just in case I need to fight the goblins. I jumped on my iceberg and headed out to the goblin camp. En route to the camp, I found myself approaching the coast of the frozen Sierra, which was littered with mobs. I used my new spear to work my way through waves of stray zombies and creepers. I discovered the spear knocked back enemies and slowed their movement. This was great when dealing with lots of mobs at once. Whilst working my way through icy peaks, I stumbled across an ice goblin. He was on patrol, but had no idea I was here. I knew I was close to the camp, so I tried sneaking past the icy brute. But just when I thought I was clear, he spotted me and managed to deal some serious damage. I rapidly shoveled through snow to make it out on the other side to safety. The Sierra was a battle in itself 
myself. But with the help of health potions, I kept my hearts up for just enough time to make it to the goblin camp, which was pretty huge and littered with evil. My nimble size and thick snowfall were my only advantages here. I climbed up onto one of the goblin ships and I was already met with enemies. I creeped past. If I was caught now, they'd surely eat me. It was clear no one suspected I was here. I perched on the edge of the ship to locate a safe path around the goblins. I jumped off the boat and hopped on the ice, sliding past danger. I checked to see if anyone spotted me. I was in the clear. The next area was being guarded by two huge goblin elites, protecting a building. I suspected a viking was in there. I creeped past the goblins, but one almost spotted me, so I sprinted to hide behind the logs. My stealth skills were top-notch. I saw an opening and sprinted around the back of the building. I then broke into it using my axe. You're safe now. Get out of the back and I'll meet you on the other side of the island. Yes, sir. I hope you can save the others. The viking fled up the mountain, and I got moving. The goblins suddenly reacted. Hmm. Must have been the wind. <laughs> Whew, that was close. The icy goblin made his way down the path, so I sprinted away to find the other Vikings. I got real close behind this ice goblin. So close that he heard me! The goblin had spotted me! This wasn't the plan! The camp's tower rang piercing bell noises. Suddenly, the whole camp knew of my presence and were on alert. Spears at the ready. The goblins were acrobatic. They launched spears at my head, but I dodged them and struck them down with my ice spear. I continued to defend myself against another group of deadly goblins, then headed into the tall building they were protecting. I found two Vikings imprisoned. After after breaking their cage, one of the Vikings stopped to inform me that other Vikings were just one minute away from their demise. They were locked away above the chief goblin's fire pit. I had to act fast. There was no way I was failing this quest. 60 seconds left. The first dude was acrobatic. After flinging a spear at my head, he front flipped and kicked me midair. I used my staff to freeze him in place, suffocating him. I was really against the time here, so I fought with efficiency, striking down enemies with haste. After the area was cleared, I threw down a health potion. You'll never make it through me. The cursed ice goblin used his staff to summon a snowy hurricane. With just 30 seconds on the clock, I had to act quickly. The wind was making it almost impossible to move freely. I pulled out my ice staff and fired it into the clouds. I was hoping that the staff's energy was enough to dissipate the snowstorm. It worked! What? How did you... No! The goblin was enraged. We exchanged attacks, which left me with just half a heart. The goblin fell. Oh no! Just five seconds. I had to run as fast as possible. I sprinted through the doors to find the goblin chief and his bodyguards. You're too late, little worm. Your Vikings are toast, and you can't save them. I jumped into the fire pit, risking my heart, and used my ice shovel to quickly put out the fire to save the Vikings. The goblin laughed. Oh, you may have put out a little fire, but try escaping with your life. My bodyguards won't let you. <laughs> Suddenly, the building started shaking, and I could hear thunder. It can't be. It was Thor. Bolts of lightning surrounded the Norse god as he descended in a rage, striking the town with his elemental powers. The goblins fell like dominoes, and the villainous town began to catch fire. I ran outside to greet him again. Need a hand, brave one? The goblin chief is about to do something horrible. I can't let the people of Jakulsa die because of me. Thor turned towards the chief's home and used his hammer to strike it with lightning. <gasps> Lightning? Fine, take your men, but I'll have my revenge. <laughs> Thor flew into the sky. I quickly mined the cage, freeing the Vikings, and then began our escape. We ran through the town, which had been devastated by Thor. Once we made it to the other side, Thor was waiting for us. Impressive work, brave one. Jakulsa's men live to see another day. How about you head back on your raft? I'll fly these men back to Jakulsa. Wow, thank you, Thor. You really showed the moose boss. I'll meet you back at Jakulsa. Another quest completed. I headed back through icy waters, ready to retrieve my rewards. Upon my return, Thor, the king, and his town were all waiting for me, cheering. Let us all celebrate for Jakulsa's new captain! Your armor, as promised, my friend. The chest appeared and fireworks popped above. Inside was my brand new armor. Woo! I was looking like a true warrior. Try walking on water, brave one. Test your armor's ability. The armor granted me frost walker and ice resistance, which will definitely keep me protected. The town celebrated from morning to night. We were all drinking the tavern's special drink, and some of us had a little too much. <laughs> the next morning, I was collecting resources, walking on water, breaking tons of icebergs with my ice staff. I used my armor to run all the way home so I could finally craft a bed and sleep. Next day, I displayed my captain's helmet, which now marked this small icy island as property of Jakulsa. I wanted to expand my home a little more and enchant my new armor, so I grabbed a bunch of saplings from the frozen blocks, created a small tree farm and headed underground whilst I waited for the trees to grow. I mined a bunch of ores and other materials. Hey, yo, bro, I'm captain of Jakulsa now. I ain't gotta talk to zombie peasants like you, all right? I, of course, grabbed obsidian so I I could build a nether portal when I get home, which of course would be a totally safe and normal nether trip with no evil monster interference whatsoever. You'd think, right?
I stumbled across a stone generator from Wish, which I took total advantage of, and then I headed back, hit some Z, and then began expanding my base using the wood, stone, and deep slate I'd collected on my mining trips. I built the nether portal and lit that bad boy up. I'm thinking I'll put the enchantment table here, but I'll need more XP if I want to enchant the rest of my armor. So I grabbed some sleep and prepared to enter the nether, but there was someone waiting for me by the portal. Luckily, they were friendly. Dude, you're not gonna believe this. The nether is, uh, frozen. One minute I'm trading gold with some piglin friends of mine. The next, this huge frosty monster just starts freezing everything. I lost a ton of gear and gold in there. It's all frozen up. You think you could go in there and try to get my stuff? As captain of Jacolsa, I of course wanted to help the adventurer. Plus that little frost goat looks like a great companion to help me conquer the Arctic Ocean. So I accepted the quest and headed into the now frozen nether. Oof, it was freezing here. Everything was iced over, but of course these guys were still kicking around. I mined quartz for XP, then headed to the adventurer's last known location, which was completely surrounded by undead looters. So I used my spear to take them all out, then proceeded to try and mount the ice with a flint and steel, in hopes that it would reveal the adventurer's loot. Oh, you doofus. You can't just melt this stuff. I'm guessing you're a friend of Halfhorn. Listen, listen, I'll help you out. About 20 minutes ago, some round jumping bounty hunters rolled through here and locked up a lava stone golem. Now, they're worth serious money for their ability to reach high temps. Luckily for you, those temps will be enough to melt this place back to normal. Find the bounty hunters, find your golem. Good luck, kid. I trawled through the frozen nether until I found one of the bounty hunters. I tried approaching them. Stop following me. They teleported away from me, disappearing into the void. I carried on hunting, mining XP on the way, until I found her again. This time, the bounty hunter attacked me with her giant claws, but my new armor absorbed her hits. She fled in frustration again. The heads-on approach clearly wasn't working, so I used the high ground to track her down and followed her without her knowing. Suddenly, a portal appeared and she jumped through. This had to be where they're keeping the lava stone golem. I approached the portal. Halt! By order of the Hunter's Guild, I demand you to stop following us. We have no business with you. I'm Captain of Jakul, sir. Release the golem, and I'll let you walk free. Captain of what now? Enough of this, you little nerd. I'm taking you in. You puny humans are worth a lot of money. A battle commenced. I began striking the hunter's longsword with my spear, but he was too skilled a swordsman. He counted with three devastatingly heavy swings, knocking me airborne. I returned with more strikes, this time dealing damage, but he was too smart. He looked for an opening and caught me, leaving me with just half a heart. I pulled out my magic staff and used its ice energy to finish off the bounty hunter. Oof, bro's life is in pieces. I finally headed into the portal. Inside was a giant lava chamber. I walked up to the lava stone golem. Have you come to my aid, my child? I see you possess tools made with ice shards. Break the spell keeping me in by putting out the fires that surround me. I did as the lava stone golem instructed, then led him to the portal out to the other side. How can I ever repay you? Well, I explained my quest and took him to the adventurous frozen gear. I asked the golem if he could restore the nether. Sounds erupted from the golem. The entire nether felt suddenly extremely hot, and in a flash, all the ice had melted and evaporated away. Revealing the adventurous items, the golem flew away. I retrieved the frozen items and headed back home to complete the quest. I placed down the crate and... Okay. And I gave him his sword. Yo, you did it! You unfroze the nether and got my stuff. The quest was completed, and my new companion appeared. Oh, bro! He's so sweet. Frosty the goat was my new companion. He defended my island all night with his ice attacks. Then we headed to bed. <laughs> Things were happening and I had no idea. Evil was plotting. Danger was certainly on its way. Nobody could prepare themselves for the devastation that was to come. The next day, I wanted to spend my XP on enchanting. And I thought, as captain of Jacolsa, I earned my right to the bookcases from Jacolsa's library. So, with my new ice katana in hand, Frosty and I headed out to Jacolsa. I made it to the enchantment table and enchanted the rest of my gear. Whilst enchanting, the whole town began to shake. I looked outside to find the town was being attacked and Thor was fighting alone. I headed down and started fighting the undead alongside Thor. Whilst his giant hammer bashed enemies, I struck undead looters with my ice spear. Thor's hammer flew past my head, buzzing with electric. I finished off the last few looters whilst Frosty pierced him with his arctic spike attack. Thor finished off the last skeleton by launching his hammer into the air, then brought it back. I wish I had one of those hammers now, because a giant ice beast revealed himself from under the ice. Thor seemed to know the beast. The creature was extremely powerful. It began to slam the ground, bringing down razor-sharp crystals. The creature possessed the same powers as my staff, but on a whole other level. I had to act attack. I fired a few bow shots from a distance, then used my staff to pin down the creature. Thor then struck him with his deadly lightning. The giant beast retreated. You think you've won, Thor, but Ragnarok is already here. We must move quickly, brave one. I will explain on the way. Where are we going? Asgard. I held onto Thor's hammer as he began to fly up. 
Whoa! We landed in a crop field. I asked why Thor was so worried when the creature said Ragnarok is here. Ragnarok. Where ice and fire become one. All things come to an end, including my home Asgard. Everyone and everything in the Arctic Ocean will be destroyed. The only way to prevent this is to defeat the Lord of Ice and the Lord of Fire. But to do this, you'll need some help from the gods. You'll need your own god-powered hammer. Let's go, brave one. I grabbed the hammer and we flew to Thor's home. This was Asgard, a city in the clouds filled with beautiful architecture and mesmerizing nature. When we landed, Thor told me I was to follow him to the altar. Before I could be granted the powers of a god, he must first ask the gods. My lords, with Ragnarok approaching, I cannot defeat the ice and fire lord by myself. The boy has clearly proven himself. I leave it in your hands. The room felt eerie. I could feel the energy from the gods above. I was nervous. I was nervous they wouldn't grant me the hammer, and Ragnarok would occur, destroying all the progress we've made this 100 days. Suddenly, lightning bolts struck the altar, and a brand new shiny hammer was revealed, crafted by the Norse gods. I retrieved my own hammer and thanked the gods for letting me join their team. The hammer tingled and buzzed. It was filled with abilities. First, I discovered that the hammer could carry me. I had gained the ability to fly. This was amazing! Thor wanted to show me the basics on how to use the hammer for combat, so we flew over Asgard's beautiful landscapes and into a training arena. Let's make this quick. The simulation began. My first strike was powered by a bolt of lightning. The second, I could summon lightning strikes from the sky to damage the enemy. The third was a ground pound attack. And finally, my favorite, I could throw the hammer and it would return! No way! Nice work. We were ready, equipped for battle. The fate of humanity was at stake. We entered the portal and returned to the Arctic Ocean. We must stop them from joining forces. I will look for the Ice Lord. You must look for the Lava Lord. Good luck. He flew away on his hunt for one of the Lords. I said my goodbyes to Frosty and flew in a bolt of energy, traveling past the sound barrier. I searched high and low for any sign of the Lords pairing together, but we had no luck until I found the beginning of the end. Meteors were falling from the sky, destroying the earth beneath it. I found Thor battling the Lava Lord. It was nearly too late. They had already found each other. Inside, boy, defeat the Ice Lord. I did as Thor said and flew into the temple, ready to face the Ice Lord. <laughs> the world ends today. The beast roared in rage and came stomping towards me. I used my katana to try and cut the beast's limbs off, but it was too strong. He hurled an ice pearl at me. I returned with a hammer throw, but I missed. The Ice Lord began to spin. He was growing stronger. It could all end here. Enough was enough. I channeled all my power into flight and hurled myself at the monster, beating him down with one final smash. I had defeated the Ice Lord, but I had to hurry, as he can be revived if the Lava Lord survives. We need to destroy both. I headed out into meteor showers to help Thor defeat the Lava Lord. I threw my hammer, but it didn't return. Wait, wait, no, 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 I'm way too vulnerable. This could be the end. I retreated back to Thor to see if he could protect me. He told me to get my staff out and pin him down with the energy from the ice staff. I pinned him down while Thor finished the Lava Lord off. We did it! We defeated them both and stopped Ragnarok. Suddenly the hammer came back. This is the best thing that came out of this whole 100 days. I thanked Thor. Look at the devastation. It was minutes away from hitting the ocean, then everything else. I returned home to Jakulsa, and Frosty was waiting for me. I have one last quest, and it's for you. Go join my Discord. You won't regret it. Thanks again for watching my video, and thanks again to Red Magic. Peace.